What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Jorge Masvidal going off on Herb Dean's bias. Jorge Masvidal is clearly not a fan of referee Herb Dean. Dean's been in the news this week for what some are calling an early stoppage of the Alexander Volkov, Jairzinho Rosenstroik fight, which gave Volkov the win. Masvidal, who had Dean as the referee for his last bout against Colby Covington, states that he feels Dean has it out for him and some other fighters also. This is what Gamebred told Ariel Helwani about it. I'm not a fan of Herb Dean, man, I can tell you that much, you know. Well, we've had a couple problems, you know, and the Donald Cerrone was, was one of them as well, you know, Jake Ennenberger as well. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know, I don't think I'm his cup of tea and kind of like takes it out when we're refereeing. He's done some things that I'm like, it's kind of weird, you know. Masvidal goes on to talk about how during the Kobe Covington fight, he was hit with a low blow, but Dean either didn't see it or didn't give him any break to deal with it. Masvidal says this is a pattern with Herb Dean, claiming that the 51-year-old referee is a poor official and that he doesn't call fouls when they should be called. What do you think? Do you feel Herb Dean has an ax to grind against certain fighters and is not a good referee? Or do you feel that Masvidal is wrong here? DC says he doesn't care about fan criticism anymore. Some advice from Joe Rogan helped Daniel Cormier really get through some moments in which he feels he cared a little bit too much about what fans were saying. Cormier, the former light heavyweight and heavyweight champ champ and sued to be UFC Hall of Famer, has caught flack in the past for his quote unquote biased commentary during fights. He calls many fights alongside legendary UFC color commentator Joe Rogan. Cormier talks about how he used to take those comments to heart, how it used to affect him, how it stifled him in his commentary, and how it generally caused more stress than it needed to. Then, DC relayed a quick anecdote during one of their previous broadcasts in which Rogan joked about it and put DC at ease. Case in point, this is what DC stated in the recent interview with MMA Junkie this week. And then Rogan said it on air, he goes, oh, we better be careful with our biased commentary. And he's like, he just doesn't care. He's like, these people like, he's like, he just does not care. Because the reality is, like, it does not matter. You're put in a position to do a job that is very, very difficult. And very few people in the world can do it. So you do it to the best of your ability. Daniel Cormier will be on the broadcast booth for the UFC 275 broadcast live from Singapore this weekend. The event will feature the rematch between Joanna Janjacek and Zhang Wei Li, Valentina Shevchenko defending her flyweight title against Taylor Santos, while light heavyweight champion Glover Teixeira will defend his belt against the surging Jiri Prohaska. What do you think about DC's comments here? Oscar De La Hoya says he and Dana White have patched things up. Remember when legendary boxer Oscar De La Hoya was set to create his own MMA promotion? He received a lot of flack for it from all sides, fans, analysts, and even UFC president Dana White. White and De La Hoya got into a very public spat where both guys threw verbal jabs at each other through the media and in interviews. This was back in 2018 and it ultimately saw De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions set up a trilogy bout between Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. Dana stated that neither of those two fighters should be stepping into the cage anymore given how dangerous the sport is, how much damage each have taken in their careers, and their age. Now, in a recent interview with El Rio Halwani, he reflects back on that time and states that while he was excited for his new MMA venture at the time, it didn't do too well because he simply didn't know enough about the sport to put on an epic and long sustaining show. He talks about how White's public derision of the promotion certainly did not help matters. De La Hoya states that he was simply in over his head and tried to get out of his lane, which was a mistake. This is what he said while on the MMA Hour this week. You know, Dana, you know, criticized me and all that. And, and I, it, it's it's for, for a good reason. I mean, you know, it's for a good reason. I, I, you know, there were some exchanges going back and forth, me and Dana, which I apologize to him uh, a, a thousand percent. I mean, I think, um, I think that there's still a lot of business to be done uh, between me and Dana um, um, in, in the future. Sure. We've yet to hear from Dana White about this matter, but what do you make of De La Hoya owning up to the failure of his foray into mixed martial arts a couple of years ago? And what do you think about his comments here concerning Dana White? 
Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to stay up to date with all of the latest fight news. Sean Brady calls out Wonderboy and Bilal Muhammad, saying they keep avoiding him. Ninth ranked welterweight Sean Brady is trying to make some noise online, calling out fighters above him in the standings and hoping to climb up the rankings in the 170 pound division. The Philadelphia native, who's undefeated at 15 and 0, called out both Bilal Muhammad and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in a series of tweets. Brady is currently 5-0 in the UFC after beating Michael Chiesa by decision in November of last year. This is what Brady stated on Twitter. Bilal Muhammad, I know the UFC is calling. Pick up the phone and agree to the fight. Nowhere to run now, I'm coming for you. Wonder Boy, UFC told you to fight me. You flat out said no because you're scared. You can't stay in the rankings, refusing to fight ranked fighters. Step up, let's go. It didn't take long for Bilal Muhammad to respond to Sean Brady as he said this, on Twitter. Didn't you pull out of our first fight, clown? Who's running? It's funny you got Twitter fingers now, but went silent when Jeff Neal was calling. There's four guys above me without a fight. I'm trying to fight. Well, Brady then responded to Bilal with these tweets. All you do is talk and call for people ahead of you. So what does that make you? Everyone you fought was ranked higher than you. Time to return the favor. If you're as good as you say, I should be easy work. Let's see how much of a bully you are. I'll be waiting. If Bilal Muhammad and Wonderboy don't want to fight, how about Jorge Masvidal and Nick Diaz? Let's show this division what's up. At the moment, Bilal Muhammad is looking to fight for a number one contender spot in the welterweight division after beating Vicente Luque earlier this year. What do you make of this whole exchange? Manel Cape goes after Davison Figueredo. UFC flyweight Manel Cape believes that the current champion of the division, Davison Figueredo, is simply being ungrateful and is squandering his chance at being an undisputed champion. Cape, who is gearing up to fight number eight ranked flyweight Rogerio Botorin at UFC 275 this coming weekend, believes that the Brazilian Figueredo should simply keep it moving. Recently, Figueredo made headlines when he stated he was upset over the fact that the promotion created an interim flyweight title fight between former champion Brandon Moreno and number one contender Kai Kara France. Figueredo is currently out with an injury and he feels that the UFC making them fight for an interim belt is quote disrespectful for him. Figueredo went so far as to give the UFC an ultimatum, either pay him more money to fight or he'll move up to bantamweight. Now, Cape, who's looking to move up in the rankings himself with a win over Batorin this weekend, stated this during the pre-fight press conference this week in Singapore. Uh, let's have some uh, complain, you know, this man is un ungrateful, you know, UFC give you everything and uh, he's right now start complaining about uh, UFC make an uh, interim belt. He just should be grateful for the opportunity he had. He was living in village, you know, and living with the cows, you know. This is going to be Cape's first fight since last December, when he beat Zalgas Zumagulov via TKO in the first round. He had a fight scheduled this past April at the UFC Apex, but he was ultimately pulled with just a few days to go before that fight due to a drug test in which he showed trace amounts of a long-term metabolite for an anabolic steroid, M3. It's the same metabolite famously involved in other high-profile drug testing cases of UFC fighters. Cape says he's innocent and was taking a pre-workout supplement that was perhaps tainted. He has since been cleared by USADA and allowed to compete. What do you think about Cape's comments about Figueredo here? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.